Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Welcome back. New month, new topic. You're going to love this topic. It's all about helping you focus your energies and stay massively motivated. Now, staying massively motivated, not an easy thing, right? Ups and downs in your day, your energies. We talked yesterday about some of the physiological things that can adversely affect or positively affect your mindset um, and really affect your outcomes. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus the next two days, Julie. Two days. On helping you to learn the understand, learn and accept the importance of really truly being um, you know, essentially obsessed. That's the word we're going to use, but really the word obsessed maybe doesn't encapsulate what we want the emotional response, frankly, from this podcast and tomorrow's podcast to be. We want you to understand that being successful ultimately is about focusing on fewer things, not on more things. That's right. And it is indeed about your level of commitment. And we're going to talk about what that actually means and some very specific action steps. So you might wonder what successful real estate agents have that mediocre or struggling agents don't have. Is it an it factor? Is it a natural sales skill? Is it luck or inheritance or something else? Maybe you'll be surprised to find out that it's actually none of those things. It is the simple fact that they are simply obsessed with real estate success. And, you know, we know this because we've led lots of the nation's most successful salespeople to the top. We've delivered hundreds of thousands of real estate coaching calls, real estate seminars, webinars, presentations, and What we've discovered that makes real estate agents successful, well, we're going to talk to you about that today. Can you adopt and adapt those strategies and habits? Of course you can. So get ready to become, if you're not already, obsessed with success. And we're going to directly confront, and that will be the word, those of you who are getting ready to get started, the procrastinators. We're going to directly confront, and hopefully you will as well, those of you who think you're too old, too young, too smart, too stupid, too educated, not educated enough. We're going to directly confront those of you who think that in order to be successful, you have to have almost an unfair advantage in the marketplace. Maybe it's, you know, you are born in money, you are born in a real estate family, you had some sort of leg up. We're going to confront all the misperceptions that you probably have, maybe some of them you don't even realize that you have, about being successful. Because what you will discover, and as I said on the top of the show today, it's about focusing on fewer things and realizing all the litany of Mickey Mouse that you've chosen to pile on your day, your life, your mindset that really shouldn't be there. We're going to clear the air, and I just challenge all of you to have an open mindset about this. And remember, all of you, the next natural step is for you to become Premier Coaching members. Premier Coaching is free. We've made it incredibly simple for you to become a Premier Coaching member. You simply have to text the word PREMIER to 47372. Text the word PREMIER to 47372. And when you do, well, frankly, everything that you are going to get as far as a Premier Coaching member, you will read about as soon as you text the word PREMIER to 47372. We'll text you a link. You have to say yes. Then we're going to text you another link. You're going to be able to read everything that's available for free when you join Premier Coaching. And it does include a daily semi-private coaching call. So go ahead and text the word PREMIER to 47372. Premier Coaching is free. You get 30 days of access, a very intense focus, um, real estate coaching, success coaching, mindset coaching, all the things you need to really excel your business forward. And if you don't want to text, that's fine too. Just go to members.timandjulieharris.com. And of course, the link to sign up is in the show description, whether you're on the podcast or whether you're listening to us on YouTube, doesn't matter. The link is right there. Just click it and sign up. Do not delay. There is no risk. So text the word Premier to 47372. Remember when uh, texting message and data rates may apply. So on to part one, this is all about how to be obsessed with success in real estate, 10 steps. So we're going to do five points per day. This is a two-part series starting today with part one. Point one, agents and brokers who are obsessed with success in real estate are 1,000% committed, no questions asked. They're all in. Now, how can you tell? Well, the way they speak will reveal their mindset. They don't use words like trying, dabbling, seeing how it goes. Instead, they speak in the affirmative. I am in real estate. I'm a salesperson. I am successful at what I do. I'm here to help you with all of your real estate needs. 
In fact, they're proud to be a real estate professional and proud to talk about it with everyone they meet all the time. There's never been more confusion about that particular point uh, than in the 30 years Julie and I have been in the real estate industry than there is now because so many of you are being persuaded to think that you have to be an influencer or work on your brand or work on your this, the other thing. But at the end of the day, what you should be obsessed with is you as a real estate practitioner. You as a salesperson, that's really what you are. And by the way, if you find yourself recoiling when I refer to you as a salesperson, that is your problem. That is 99% of the problem that you're experiencing in real estate is from your lack of willing to accept the fact that you are a salesperson. That is what you are. And look, Julie and I were both raised basically be academic cogs of some variety. I mean, Julie more than me, her parents were school teachers. And there was not a lot of reverence given to salespeople and how we were raised, for sure. And some of you have experienced that as well. But we were liberated when we accepted the fact that we are salespeople. But what it took for us to understand the importance of accepting that we are salespeople was the realization of what a salesperson is. A salesperson is a problem solver. That is what you are. You are somebody whose job is to solve somebody else's problem. And so many of you guys have these bad sort of, uh, you know, a salesperson has bad connotation in your mind. You're thinking of bad things. So ask yourself, is your first reaction when I said you are a salesperson, something along the lines of, oh, no, I'm not. I'm a this. I'm a the other thing. I'm a home counselor. I'm a this. I'm a, I have some other fancy label. Was that your first reaction? Look at your business card. That'll tell you the truth of what you actually think. Now, what is happening as a result of you having that reluctance to accept the fact that you're a salesperson? What is happening? Well, I know what's happening. You're actually not making as many, much money as you otherwise would have. You're not becoming the salesperson that you otherwise could have. You're not actually helping the people that you could otherwise help because you are reluctant to let the world know that you're the salesperson. Your mission, one of the first things you should be obsessed with, or frankly, the main thing you should be obsessed with, is making yourself the best version of yourself as a real estate salesperson. Then you're going to ask, well, what the heck does that mean? What that means is what we're going to talk about in the next four points today. That's right. So point number two, agents and brokers who are obsessed with success in real estate have definiteness of purpose. That's a term that was coined by Napoleon Hill. I'm going to say that again, definiteness of purpose. This means that they have very specific and meaningful goals. They can tell you every day if they are on track, ahead, or behind in their goals. If you are without goals, refer to the real estate treasure map before it's too late. It's okay to fall a little bit short of your goals, but it's really not okay, assuming that you're serious about your practice, it's not okay to not have any goals. How would you even know if you're on track ahead or behind? So I had a call yesterday with one of our podcast listeners, one of you guys who was joining um, our EXP group. And if you want to talk to Julie and I about joining EXP, we are proudly involved and associated with EXP Realty, and all of you should be as well. Text me directly at 512 758 0206 512 758 0206. I'm going to outline this conversation. I don't even have to think about it because I've had this conversation tens of thousands of times. So the agent and I were talking about what their specific goals were. They did not have any written down goals. They did not have an action plan. They did not really have any de definite of purpose. So what they told me was what all of you are probably thinking your def your, what your aim in real estate should be. I want to sell this person in particular's number was 50. I want to sell 50 homes. I want to have a team. I want to have a brand. I want to this, the other thing. Okay. Then I asked why, why do you want to do those things? What's the point? There was no answer. There was crickets. There was no real particular purpose behind the, all these supposed goals. I then asked this person, what is it? What, you know, where did you get these goals from? Why are these goals important to you? No answer there. Listen, I want you to really internalize the, hopefully the coaching I'm giving you guys right now. They were essentially following this plan that they had adopted from somebody else, that there was no real heart behind it, soul behind it, no reason behind it. So then I asked them this question. I tried to pivot them to really give some meaning behind what their goals would be. I asked them, for example, how much money do you have to earn per month? They told me it was 15 grand, maybe it was 17. I don't remember. Then I said, okay, how much money, what other than that, other than your personal bills, um, are you wanting to, you know, basically make sure you're covering in terms of cash flow? And they had goals, a boat, and this, and the other thing. Okay, I rewrote all those things down. We figured out how much all those things would cost. Then we factored in taxes and savings, and this person didn't have any real onerous debt. And we wrote all that down. And so for that person to have enough money coming in to pay all their bills, not just that, but to have a fantastic lifestyle, 
to improve their lifestyle, to spoil their family, to spoil themselves. Then we had we came up with another number, and it was like right around. Th- I think actually with taxes, it was like forty thousand dollars a month. Then I multiplied forty times twelve, and that was basically five hundred thousand dollars. And I said, based on five hundred thousand dollars, if you were to accomplish all your goals, if you were to pay all your bills, spoil your family, buy the boat, do all the other things that you wanted to do with your money. Um, and you accomplish all those goals, how would you feel in 12 months? And this person, and I'm intentionally not telling you, giving you any hints because I, I did not ask permission to tell this story, was elated, elated, saying, oh my gosh, why haven't I thought like this before? Now I understand what the actual numbers are. And then we did the math backwards. What's your average uh, sales price? What's your average commission? We divided the number of homes that they had to sell based on their average commission and you know, using the number 500 as the baseline to figure out exactly how many homes they had to sell per year. And then we put more numbers behind it. We just decided where those deals were going to come from based on prior lead generation experience. Some of them were going to come from a referral company. Some of them were going to come from proactive lead generation. You guys get the point? We started to create the actual framework for their business plan. We created a meaning behind the numbers, not just numbers. And agents, if you're ever wondering why you're not actually accomplishing your goals that you set for yourself, it's because there's no meaning behind it. It's a feeling question. So what will it feel like when you've earned enough money to have this fantastic lifestyle and to spoil everyone you love? What will it feel like when you buy that boat? What will it feel like when you're actually able to donate money to your whatever charity you want to donate it to? What will it feel like when you're able to pay off that debt? That's the emotional anchor that will make it so your numbers, it moves from spreadsheet to soul, basically. And that's what happens when you have these types of conversations. That's what the real estate treasure map is all about. And you guys get the real estate treasure map as soon as you join, um, obviously, uh, Premier Coaching by texting the word Premier to 47372. The ultimate number that this uh, call resulted in and the treasure map actually will help you resolve as well is what your real estate magic number is. Okay, so all this, this whole conversation I was just telling you about, I had with this agent who was joining our EXP group. Um, then the, it all came down to a specific number. The specific number, guys, was not the number of closings they had to have every month. Obviously, that was important. But the specific number was the number of listings they had to have at all times. The actual magic number formula, which some of you know because you're coaching clients, results in you knowing what the number of listings you had at all times. And I'll just give you a quick overview, and obviously you get more of this when you join Premier Coaching. This agent in particular, based on what was going on in their marketplace and their average sale price, for them to meet or, meet or exceed all their financial goals, all their wants and their, their have tos and their want tos, had to have something like six or seven listings at all times. Because we knew that even with the market, even in this particular area, starting to adjust more towards a balanced market and then maybe a buyer's market, we knew that if this agent had seven listings active at all times, realistically, three or four were going to be in contract at all times. So I chose the lower number of three. Average commission was something like, $12,000. 12,000 times three isn't quite enough. That's only $36,000. So obviously that person's going to have to have four in contract. You guys get the point? So the magic number formula that you have to have is the number of listings you have at all times. And we know using the statistics from the MLS, the average days on the market, you know, assuming the li- listings are motivated sellers, we know exactly what you're going to have to have as far as active listings at all times. And that will result in a pending listing number at all times. And the whole mission the definite of purpose, the number one focus that this agent should always have is getting to, building up to, and then maintaining seven listings at all times. Your entire business plan, everything you do in the real estate industry needs to come down to that one number, the number of listings you need at all times to meet or exceed your financial goals. Everything else is optional. Everything else becomes secondary. So then the next natural question is what is it going to take for you to learn how to be a powerful listing agent so you can build up to that number? Some of you are blessed with high average sale prices, like really high average sale prices, million dollars, two million dollars. So you're not going to need that many listings. You might only need two or three. When Julie and I sold real estate, we needed around 25 or 30 at all times because our sale price Average sale price was at the time like 300000 But in addition to that, we the days in the market was on average in our MLS like 141 I think. So we had to actually calculate our real estate magic number based on the realities of that particular market. That's what the real estate magic number formula does. That's part of the real estate treasure map. That's what you, one of the first things we want you to do when you join a Premier Coaching. But understand, 
What we're doing is motivating you by removing the clutter that is in your brains, hopefully, if you allow us to, and focusing you in on one number. How many listings do you need at all times to meet or exceed all your have-tos and your want-tos in terms of your financial obligations and your wants, right? Your dreams and your have-to-pay-for type things. And it always comes down to one number. How do you feel knowing that's true? I bet a hell of a lot less stressed. That find out what that is and drill down. That's right. And look at the clarity of just focusing on one number. That is hell definiteness yeah. of purpose. But, but that is it. the difference between the obsessed and everyone else is that they know that number. They are absolutely obsessed with that number. It's actually something I've been talking with a lot of coaching clients and coaches about today is the fact that when the days on the market go up, you also have to change your magic number. You have to be cognizant of all that. And that's another reason to be involved in coaching. So you know these things. What are these guys being told they should focus on? Your social network, like how many likes you're getting, how many followers you're having, how many views you're getting, yep. how many people are in your CRM. There, You are being told, this is the problem, guys. This is absolutely the problem. You're being told to focus on a bunch of stuff that ultimately doesn't really matter. Not matters in comparison to the number of listings you need at all times in order to determine what your magic number is. What would you rather have? Five listings at all times or 50 million followers on Seriously. TikTok? <laughs> no. I mean, seriously, it's what, would, preposterous, you, what would you rather have? What would you rather have guys? Five listings consistently at all times, knowing that two and a half or three are always going to be in contract. Or would you rather have, you know, you guys get the point, you get the insanity of it all. Or would you rather have 10,000 people in your CRM? You do not have to build all these other things, worry about these other things, learn all these other things. If you focus on being a powerful listing agent, Julie and I will never change our message because it is, is absolutely the truth. It cuts through all the BS. Why aren't you hearing more people saying what we're saying? Why is it that you don't necessarily, like Tim and Julie have a unique message? It's because the other folks don't know what we know because they haven't been in real estate as long as we have. They haven't as coached as long as we have. They haven't seen all these trends come and go like we have. We know ultimately the agents that have the best businesses long-term are the ones that know what their magic number formula is. That's right. So point number three, the most successful agents who are obsessed with success in real estate, they don't give up. They have a stick to itiveness that others lack. So for example, when conflict arises, not that that ever happens in real estate, but let's just say <laughs> it might. Okay. When conflict arises, they see it as opportunity versus an obstacle. That's something for you to write down. What do you see conflict as? Do you see it as an obstacle that you've got to overcome and it feels negative and yucky to you? Or do you look at it as an opportunity? The successful has an outlook and their actions reflect the fact that they believe the only way out of that conflict is through instead of giving up. They don't give up. They just move forward. So Julie, I want to actually yes. do something we've never done before. I'm going to click right here and I'm going to read the uh, information. So while we've been on this podcast today, four of you guys have joined Premier Coaching. And um, and I have there's a little bit of profile information because these four happen to have talked to Andrew, who works as part of our team. And I want you, I'm going to give special message to all of you who joined just specifically or during this, you know, the podcast. Roy, how do you want to pronounce that last name? I, I'm, show me where you're Nick, pointing Right to. there. Oh. Nick, how would you pronounce that? I have no idea. Nick Nickowd? Nick Roy Nickowd from yeah. Knoxville, Tennessee. All right, so here's what Roy is specifically looking for. Um, he's getting deal. He wants to focus on learning how to prospect. He wants to focus on continuing to improve uh, his, his knowledge to hi hypothetically add staff and build a team. He's looking for basically long-term goals in order to shore up his retirement. I want to welcome Roy. Was it Roy? Roy, yes. yes. I want to welcome Shirley Hampton. I can pronounce that name. And she's from Pennsylvania. And she wants to learn how to invest in properties and uh, create passive income from her uh, in her retirement years. And listen, a special message for you. The best way to create passive income is learn how to be a listing agent because most times your listings, once you position them right in the market, will essentially act as passive little you know savings accounts that basically sell in every 60 to 90 days. Marcy Wright from Cleveland, Ohio. Maurice. Well, Maurice, sorry. Sorry, Maurice. Maurice. Um, he wants to focus mainly on need, uh, need lead generation and proper time management. So welcome, Maurice. And then Koa? Koa Gonzalez Koa from Gonzalez. Hawaii. That's great. That's a great first name if you're from Hawaii, Definitely. right? Definitely. Isn't that a kind of coffee? I think so. Yeah, I think Koa is a kind of coffee. And it, Koa, uh, Koa just obtained his real estate license and been full-time firefighter for 15 years. 
He's looking to focus on proper time management, prospecting, and referral network building. Koa, I have a feeling you're a coaching client. So please listen to what Julie and I are saying. Please focus on, on what we've been, all four of you, and there's a lot of others that are joining every single day. The most important thing is you do not waste time waiting for someone to tell you that it's okay for you to become a listing agent. Become a listing agent urgently, especially in a changing market like this. In at least the last 15 years, it's never, I'm going to use this word sparingly, but easy to become a listing agent because so few agents know how to actually proactively lead generate. Do what other people aren't willing to do and you'll experience things in life other people aren't willing to experience. We're coming out of an era where a lot of people were led to believe that they're better than they actually are because the market was essentially allowing all ships to rise. And that's what happens when we come out of these easy money eras like we are right now. Now we're going to start entering into an era where those who are essentially swimming without a swimsuit, the tide is coming in and they're going to be, be exposed for essentially having swum naked for the last 15 years. The way that you absolutely positively dominate in this market that we're in and the market that's going to become is making up the skills deficit urgently. So all of you who just joined Premier Coaching, all of you who will continue to join Premier Coaching, please listen to my message. Focus on fewer things. I started the podcast today by saying that. I'm going to say that consistently. Do not allow a lot of noise in your minds. Do not be focusing on anything other than becoming a powerful listing agent. And ultimately, it comes down to five or six things. It comes down to learning how to be a proactive lead generator, a very effective pre-qualifier, a very effective presenter, um, a very effective uh, negotiator, and obviously very good with lead follow-up. You learn how to do those things at the highest level, and that's primarily what we focus you in on, on Premier Coaching. And yes, we have sections on branding. We have sections on marketing, lots and lots on lead generation. You want to build a team, we've got content on that. But none of it means anything unless you've mastered the art and science of those core activities. Those are the core activities that will always get you paid. So point number four, agents and brokers who are obsessed with their success in real estate, they actually speak less but do more. They take action even if they're not sure. They earn while they learn. They learn through making mistakes versus suffering from analysis paralysis. I'm going to give you a very clear example of that and a shout out because I know she's listening, Audrey in Utah. And one of the things that we're working on is her prospecting skills, her proactive lead generation. And I can tell you, because I listen to that, our Harris certified coaches listen to calls as well. And the difference between like Audrey 1.0 and Audrey 2.0 is very significant. The things that we talk about in coaching is very different when you're actually being proactive and you're putting yourself out there and you're saying, you know what? This call might not have gone perfectly, but boy, did I learn about what to say, what not to say, how to say it, how to have a conversation, how to ask better questions, and how to close somebody. You can't have those conversations and get better if you're not taking action, if you're just sitting around thinking about it, getting ready to get started, studying your scripts, maybe role-playing for a couple hundred more hours before you actually talk to a real person. It's, it gets even worse because there's so, there's an enormous industry that makes billi hundreds of billions a year, I'm sure that is all designed to motivate you, right? Mm -hmm. I can't find my motivation. I need motivation. <laughs> right. I need this. I need the other thing. If you're constantly looking for motivation, at some point you've got to accept the fact that you're just lying to yourself. You're just looking for some external thing that's going to somehow, you know, get you off your ass to start doing what you're doing. The problem with motivation is that comes externally is it never lasts. True internal motivation. If you want to know how to have it ultimately, and this is the unfortunate truth because I wish this wasn't the truth. It's doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. And the emotional response to you doing that is going to be the motivation that you're looking for. Most of the things that matter the most in life in general are not the things you want to do the least. But on the other side of doing those things and having seen yourself do them, it doesn't necessarily ever become easier but you start getting the benefits of it. And when you start seeing the benefits of having done it, then you start to build momentum. The dumbest thing you can do is wait around for your plan to be perfect, your presentations to be done, you to feel perfectly motivated to get everything done. In our coaching program, we've designed it so you earn while you learn. You do not learn, then go earn. This is not a four-year degree in, you know, whatever. This is learning. This is like the most practical, tactical approach. We know that you do not have time to waste to learn a bunch of overly complicated Mickey Mouse, your funnels and whatever else, to go make money. We want you to make money and learn on the job. That's really incredibly important. So be honest with yourself. 
If you're procrastinating having real honest-to-God conversations with real honest-to-God buyers and sellers, a conversation where they can actually possibly say no to you, you're absolutely never going to get anywhere. You're never going to leave the starting gates. And one of the things that Julie and I love to say because it's shocking to so many people, but it really does cut through the bullshit really fast, Mm -hmm. is if you're not putting yourself in a position to hear the word no at least five times a day from a buyer or a seller – Julie and I have an almost nine-year-old, and trust me, we hear no from her a hell of a lot more than five times a day, right? <laughs> we have no problem hearing no. Yeah, we, yeah. I mean, we, right? But here's the, oh, sorry. I collect them. I digressed, right? <laughs> but the point is, is if you're not putting yourself in a position to hear the word no at least five times a day from a prospective buyer or seller, you did not work that day. How about that being your baseline? Not how many tweets you did or how many likes you did or how many TikToks you did. How about did you actually put yourself in a position to hear no and to be rejected? And here's the reason that matters. Because rejection sucks. Rejection hurts. Getting to the point where you set your ego aside just to have put yourself in a position to ask a question that might uh, might result in a no is a massive bridge for many of you that you have to cross. But here's what happens. You do not want to feel the pain. You do not want to feel the anguish and the humiliation of being rejected. So while you're in the process of knowing that today you're going to go and talk with five Fizbos, you are going to become the absolute wizard of the Fizbo script, of the objection handlers. And you are going to learn on the job. You want to know how Julie and I sold over 100 houses our first year? Exactly like we're telling you now. Did we have a script that we used? We sort of did. We found some scripts in our real estate, in our REMAX office. This was before coaching. Yeah, this was before the internet, I have to to say. But that's what we did. We found a scripts book in our real estate office, and we said, well, hell, let's go try this. Yes, and we we memorized, we internalized, we Uh, personalized. We we got better with every single appointment. Some of them were better than others. We definitely did not memorize when we started doing it. We were totally and completely winging it, yeah. And but, yet, we did transactions. Well, it's because, okay, you knocked on the first door, and we did door, we called and door knocked, mm-hmm. and a, you know, talked to a FISBO, and the FISBO kind of blew us off, and we said, well, that didn't go well. What did I suck at? And then you go and learn what you sucked at, and you get better, and you get, and you get better. Improved. But you didn't quit. That's the main thing. And we did that over and over. And it turns out most of the sellers that we listed also wanted to buy a house. You guys get it? So one transaction equal two transactions. Oh, we found the buyer that wanted to buy their listing. Now we have three transactions. And we held open houses and converted them all and learned something called furiously fast lead follow-up made a difference versus sitting on those leads. It you all learn com- more when you take action. It all came from being proactive and going directly after the sellers. That's the reason I think, honestly, it's harder now to be successful in real estate than it ever has been. Successful in the sense that you're actually making net profit. You're making actually more money than you'd make if you worked at McDonald's, for example. And I'm not being facetious when I say that. I'm being truthful. A lot of you guys like to think, well, I sold you know, $3 million in real estate. Okay, let's do the math on that. After you paid your referral fees like Zillow Flex and after you paid your broker and after you paid all these other expenses, what was your actual net on that? And it was stat- – I've done this – had this conversation with so many of you and the number is usually like less than $35,000. In other words, you would have made more jo- money had you had an actual job by far. That is the problem ultimately when you do not learn how to be a proactive lead generator. You will always be beholden. Everything we're saying to you – I have a feeling is resonating with you. You know it's the truth. You just don't want to hear it. So here's a fun homework assignment for all of you. Oh, did you have to do point number five? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Julie's going to do point number five, and I'm going to give you a homework assignment. All right, point number five. And interestingly, you'll notice all of these points are about simplifying, not about overcomplicating. So point number five, the most successful agents who are obsessed with success in real estate, they actually lack ego. Instead, they lead with curiosity and obsession with skills. They are constantly seeking ways to become more competitive, more skilled, and more effective. They don't just sit back and go, well, I got it all figured out. They are constantly upgrading. And you mentioned something yesterday when we were teeing this up, that the, some many of the most successful agents, you don't know their names because they're not all about that. They fly under their radar. They're drilled down. They're concentrating on their magic number, getting their listings sold. They have extreme clarity on what they're supposed to be accomplishing. Well, and here's really your big takeaway. Wrapping all these points together, your homework assignment, obviously join Premier Coaching. If you're ready to join EXP Realty, text me directly, 512-758-0206, and just put in the subject line EXP. Now, here's your homework assignment overall. Write down a list of the things that you want to do the least in real estate. (laughs) Seriously, do that assignment. 
Write down the things that you want to do the least. Write down the things that you will not do no matter what. Now I want you to notice all the things that you wrote down were the very things that require skill, the very things that will result in po uh, possible rejection if you don't have skill, but they're also the very things that are going to get you paid the fastest. Isn't that interesting? That should, not all of you are going to be ready for that message, but for those of you who are, I just changed your world, didn't I, by saying that very thing. The things in life that you want to do the least are the things in life that you should be doing the most because they're going to have the biggest impact on your life long term. For sure, 100% of the time, no exceptions. Now, a secondary question. What are the things that you want to do in your real estate business? And notice that those things are the things that are going to be the most speculative, the most passive, have no direct interaction with anybody, require the least amount of effort, probably a shit ton of time, truthfully, but also have the least results. Isn't that fascinating? So you can do the social network and the branding and all the rest of the stuff that you guys like to do. We call those real estate art projects after you've done the real work in real estate because the real work in real estate gets you paid. The real work in real estate makes you incredibly proud of yourself because you're solving other people's problems. The real work in real estate gives you a mission. It gives you a sense of being, a purpose. It allows you to develop the absolute deep driven obsession that you need to be successful in this business or any business guys get it? This is about making it so that you can trigger your innate, deeply, in some cases, very deeply um, rooted desire to be obsessed. If you want to be obsessed with something, be obsessed with the things we talked about today. And when you are, when you're locked in, nothing's going to hold you back. Intuitively, innately, in your absolute core, you know everything we just said was true. So why are you still resisting? Do the homework assignment. What are the things right now that you will absolutely positively not do no matter what, right? And then notice those are the things that are going to get you paid the fastest and then write down the things that you want to do in real estate. Just keep it to five things on each category. And then you'll notice those are the things that are going to get you paid never or incredibly rarely. Fascinating, isn't it? You guys have a fantastic day. We'll talk to you on the show tomorrow. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com. Thank <laughs> you.